You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Modern Western medicine has a pill for every ill. Welcome to Holistic Healthy Living with your host, Carrie Leto. Carrie is here to show you the way and to help you to discover a more healthy lifestyle through looking at the body as a whole and looking for the root cause. So now, please welcome the host of Holistic Healthy Living, Carrie Leto. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Episode 9 of Holistic Healthy Living. I'm your host, Carrie Leto. We're coming to you live on TuneIn Radio and the BBM Global Network. Thanks for tuning in. Happy you could join me tonight. So this show is dedicated to bringing you holistic practices and practitioners. If this is your first time tuning in or you've missed some shows or perhaps there's one you'd like to listen to again, the archives are on the BBM site. Just scroll down the page, click Read More. They'll open up for you. And so a little bit about me. I'm a holistic health and lifestyle coach, yoga and Pilates teacher, personal trainer, and Reiki master. I own a yoga studio and spa in Franklin, New Jersey. We offer group yoga, Pilates, and fitness classes, private sessions, personal training, Reiki, massage, skincare, and we make all natural aromatherapy products. If you're local, come on in. We'd love to meet you. And I'm on a mission to encourage everyone out there to get to the root cause of any issue you may have, whether that issue is with body, mind, or spirit. And I start this show just as I do all of my yoga classes with a little bit of centering, breath work, a little bit of guided meditation. So today, I I chose to do a little bit of healing meditation. It's such a sensitive day. It's such a hard day for so many people. Uh, Here we are 17 years later, remembering the tragic events of this day back in 2001. Um, So let's do a little bit of healing today. Okay, and of course, if you're listening to this and you're driving, you're not going to close your eyes, but you could join us for the breath work. And if you're home, go ahead and get comfortable Get into a comfortable seated position if possible, and go ahead and close your eyes if you're able to. And just let go of any cares or worries from the day. Just concentrate on the breath. Focus on the air entering the body and exiting the body. Every inhale is bringing fresh energy with it, love and light, nourishment and healing energy to every cell in your body. Every exhale is getting rid of anything no longer needed. What do you need to get rid of in your life? What are you holding on to that is no longer serving you? Visualize it exiting the body with the exhalation. Breathing in loving, healing energy. Exhaling out anything not needed anymore. Anything that feels negative to you. Tension. Pain. Anxiety, fear, depression, anger, worry, anything that feels negative to you, let it go with the exhale. Allow your breathing to become deeper. Allow your body to relax. 
allow your body to heal. Try to feel the energy flowing throughout your body. Try to notice if it's flowing freely. And if a particular area needs more attention today, go ahead and send the energy there. And now go ahead and bring your attention to the crown of your head, your energy center that is connected to the universe. Feel that connection to the universe. Feel the warm, healing, white gold light at your crown. Let it come into your body, entering all of your energy centers, healing everything it touches. Now just check in to make sure that you're grounded. Your root chakra, your connection to the earth, located at the base of your spine. So feel roots extending out from this energy center, running throughout your legs, through the bottom of your feet, anchoring you into the earth, just like a tree, rooted. Feel the energy connection between you and the earth. Bring any cleansing or healing needed here. And now make your way up to the sacral chakra, the energy center of your creativity and pleasure. Are you allowing yourself to creatively express yourself and enjoy life? Are you going with the flow? Bring any cleansing or healing needed here. And now move up to your navel your fire, your mini sun, your will. How is your willpower and self-esteem? Believe in yourself. You are all that you need. Bring any cleansing or healing needed here. And now your heart center your compassion, your ability to love and to be loved. Open it up and allow yourself to truly feel. And bring any cleansing or healing needed here. And share this wonderful feeling with anyone else you think may need some love or healing right now. Just think of them and send it out. And now move up to the energy center located in your throat, your ability to speak your truth and also to hear your truth. This energy center is directly connected to your thyroid. So don't ever be afraid to speak or hear your truth. Bring any cleansing or healing needed here. And now move up to your third eye, located in the middle of your forehead, in between your eyes, the ability to see your truth, your intuition. Do you see things clearly? Or are you wearing rose colored shades? Start removing the wrapping if you have not already done so. Bring any cleansing or healing needed here. And now bring the attention back to the crown of your head, your connection to the universe. Reach to your higher self. Know there is a higher power and you are a part of it, a beautiful, loving part of it. Bring any cleansing or healing needed here. And now bring this wonderful light in towards your heart center. Know that it is always here for you whenever you need it. Reach within when you need answers or strength or feel alone. Ask it for healing. Ask it for guidance whenever needed. 
Now bring the attention back to your breath, back to the body, awareness back into the room. Start to wiggle your hands and your toes. Roll your shoulders back a few times. Breathe in deeply through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. I hope you all enjoyed that. If you did and you're local, please join us Sunday mornings at our studio. I would love to meet you. All right, we need to take a short break now and we'll be back in a moment. You're listening to Holistic Healthy Living on TuneIn Radio and the BBM Global Network. I'm Carrie Leto. We'll be right back. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at L'École des Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www www.asmarart.com www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Welcome back to Holistic Healthy Living. I'm Carrie Leto, and we're live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So I hope you enjoyed that meditation just before the break. Um, We start out every one of these shows with the uh, meditation. So I really hope you you like that. Just a little bit of calming at the end of the day, right? I mean, it's the end of the day here anyway at the, on the East Coast. Um, I'm in New Jersey. So it, wherever you are, I hope you enjoyed that. So getting back to this day, September 11th, 17 years later, um, this day is just so hard for so many people. So it, it's why I wanted to talk about grieving tonight. It was a day that changed our lives. It changed our nation. Uh, Almost 3,000 people died that day, about 6,000 injured, not to mention all the people that died of after effects, you know, first responders that died from cancers after the fact. Uh, I I think it's it's just one of those days that you're going to remember what you were doing uh, when it happened for the rest of your life. Um, I I remember I was home that morning. I I was living in Garfield at the time. Uh, I had just had my son. I was still on maternity leave. Uh, I don't know if you listened to my first show, show, but you might recall that um, the day of my first show was actually my son's birthday, uh, July 17th. Um, So my son was still a baby. My daughter was at pre-K. She was five years old. My kids don't remember this day. Uh, My husband was at work. And um, if you're you're a new mom with uh, not even a two month old baby, you know what it's like to be getting up all during the night for feedings and changings. And uh, I, I remember needing to catch up on some sleep that morning, and I decided to go back to sleep after that early morning feeding. Um, I heard the phone ringing a couple of times, but I didn't feel like getting up, so I let it go to the answering machine. You, know, you remember answering machines? But. Um, it was my best friend calling, and she left a message asking if I, I had seen what had what's going on at the World Trade Center yet. She said a plane had crashed, the building's on fire. She, she sounded a bit frantic, so I got up, I turned on the TV to see a plane crashing into one of the towers. 
uh, and uh, I jumped. But uh, me being a hopeful person, I, I did not know what was to come that day. And I, I don't think any of us did. I honestly thought most people would have been evacuated out and our heroes would help the upper floors escape. I really didn't realize how bad it was. I, I remember calling my dad and, and he sounded so concerned. And uh, if you know me, you know I'm a pretty calm person. My dad was the same way. I um, decided to pick up my daughter from pre-K, and I took the kids to my parents' house. And uh, there was news of the two other planes, the one that hit the, pen the Pentagon and the other that crashed into the field in Pennsylvania. I remember my dad saying we're under attack. I remember seeing people jumping from the windows of the towers. That That's when it hit me that the people on the upper floors, they, they may never be rescued I, I don't think anyone was expecting what happened next, you know, when the towers fell. I, I spent the whole day at my parents' house, and a neighbor across the street told us his ordeal of getting out of Manhattan that day. It took him all day. This was around uh, 8 or 9 o'clock that night, I think. Um, and my parents' house was in Rutherford, so that that's pretty close to Midtown Manhattan on the Jersey side. Um I, I, you know, I, I've heard quite a few stories from a few other close friends that were also in the area when it happened. Thank, thank God everyone I knew was all right, though. I'm fortunate to not have lost anyone that day. I can't imagine what family members of the victims of that day were going through, not knowing what's happening, not being able to get in touch with them. I know the phone lines were down. They didn't know if, you know, their loved ones were alive or dead or if they're suffering. And the fires burned for quite some time. And the cleanup went on for months. I, I can't imagine not having um, closure, you know. But then little by little, they, they found and identified bodies in the rubble. Yeah, at least people were able to get some closure and, and to be able to grieve. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk a, a little bit about grieving. So the grieving process, is, it's going to be different for everyone. Remember, we're all different. As much as I say we're all the same, you know, we're from the same place, we are all one, you have to remember that at the same time, yes, we're all part of the divine, but we're all living unique individual experiences. And don't judge how someone else handles grieving. Um, I might handle a little, a little bit differently than you. Um, some people actually might think I'm a little bit cold because I'm usually not the one sobbing at funerals. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit of some of my experiences and a little bit of my upbringing. I mean, I was actually brought up to think, uh, you know, maybe a little bit differently than you. Um, my dad was very spiritual. He taught me to never be afraid of death. From a young age, he instilled this in me. He told me, never be afraid because life goes on. You, you just transform. And I know a lot of people who don't believe in this. I know there's many out there to think, there, you know, that you just have one life. This is all you got, and then you die. Then there's nothing. I, I just can't grasp that concept. I never could. Um, my dad told me when he died, he was going to explore the universe. So uh, my grandfather, his father, died when um, died when he was young. He was about 54, I believe. Uh, he died before I was born. I never met him. And uh, my dad was convinced he was going to die young also. He would always say, you know, my dad died at 54. I'm going to die young, just like him. Um, he was off for by about 10 years. He died when I was uh, when he was 64. It, it happened just a few years ago, back in 2015. And actually, in 2015, I, I lost quite a few close to me. Um, early 2015, I received a letter, uh, a letter from a fellow Reiki master, that the master had taught us was not doing too well. He had cancer. He was receiving therapy to, to just be comfortable at this point. And he encouraged all of us to reach out. But by the time I received the letter, I learned that Carter had already passed on. So I never had a chance to say goodbye to him. But I got to say, I sometimes do feel him, especially during my Reiki sessions. Um, and my father was next that year. Uh, it, end of June. Carter was actually, the beginning of the year, it was some, um, it had just gotten over uh, uh, New Year's New Year's Day. All right, so um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience with uh, my father's passing. Uh, when we get back, we're going to take a short break now. Again, you're listening to Holistic Healthy Living on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. 
and we'll be right back. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy to understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru Way. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. And welcome back to Holistic Healthy Living. I'm Carrie Leto. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And today we're talking about the uh, grieving process, um, honoring this day. Uh, before the break, I was telling you um, a little bit about some people. Uh, 20, 2015 um, was, I, I lost quite a few close people to me. I started telling you a little bit about my dad. Uh, so um, it was the end of June in uh, 2015. Uh, my family lives in Southwest Florida. They moved down there in 2004. Uh, my daughter was down there on vacation with a friend. I, I had a trip scheduled for the very next week. Uh, we were going down, uh, me, my boyfriend, and uh, my son. And uh, my dad, it just it just happened so quickly. Um, earlier that year, he had surgery on his spine. He had a spinal stenosis. So if you don't know what that is, it's narrowing of the spaces in the spine, and it puts pressure on the nerves. Uh, so the surgery was successful, but no one ever looked into actually what had caused the condition for him. Um, so we happened to be down in Florida when he had his previous surgery. It was, uh, I, I believe it was April of that year. Uh, and that year, I'd, I'd been down to Florida for quite a few trips. Um, so they thought they had spotted some type of mass in his throat during the surgery, but didn't investigate further. They instead wanted to try to bi- biopsy it while he was awake. Um, they kept trying to grab tissue, but I guess they couldn't get enough for a biopsy. And my, my dad was hurt, and he told them, you know, let's try this again in another time. Uh, so they gave him an appointment for a later date to follow up. I, I know it took a while for him to, to you know, get into the doctor um, because of the availability. Um, I'm just trying to remember the timeline in my head, but I, I think I remember at that point the doctor he went to, you know, looked down his throat and said, oh, this doesn't look good. Um, scheduled another appointment, but I, I think he told him, you know, there, there's, you know, a t- tumor growing, um, you know, let's schedule up a follow point, follow up appointment, which he, he never made it to. Things just kind of went quickly, quickly. Um, but anyway, long story short, it, it got so bad that my do- my dad couldn't continue. Uh, he couldn't breathe. He called my mom, who happened to be at work at the time, and I uh, said he was having problems breathing. Nine one one was called. My mom raced home, and at the hospital, they said that he had cancer in his head and in his neck, and there wasn't anything that they could do for him. Um, they put a trach in in uh, his throat, and so nobody knew. We didn't know what to expect from that point on. And I, I told you, I'm a very hopeful person. It, it takes a lot for me to lose hope. Um, I do know he, he refused a feeding tube. Uh, there was an option, but he didn't want it. I can't say I blame him. Uh, and then he was moved to a hospice. 
And uh, like I said earlier, my daughter and her friend were visiting. Uh, I spoke to my daughter on a Friday night, and she told me that my da- my dad was not looking good. Um, I asked uh, if she thought he would hold on until I visited next week. She said, I don't know. Honestly, he's not looking too good. Um, the next day, my mom, my daughter, and her friend were doing some shopping. They were trying to keep themselves themselves occupied. Uh, no one knew what would happen to my dad. Uh, my daughter texted me and called me a few times. She said she had stomach pains. She thought it was just cramps. I told her put some peppermint oil on it and lay down. Um, me being into essential oils, I got my mom into them. So good thing there was some peppermint oil on hand. She said it helped a little, but she could still feel the pain. Um, so they took another trip back to the hospice, at which point, point my daughter told me, if you want to see your father alive again, you'd better get down here quick. So I I spoke to my mom. She seemed so calm. I I think she was just in shock with everything going on. Um, I I remember asking her what she thought. How much longer does he have? No one knew. You know, she didn't know. And so I started looking for flights at that moment. I I found one. I booked it. I booked a flight out for the very next morning. Um, I think this, it was like late afternoon when I booked, I I remember having dinner plans that night, calling my friend, apologizing, you know, of course she understood. Um, so I booked out a a flight leaving uh, Sunday morning to come back, I think on Monday. And, uh, at this point, my daughter said she was in so much pain that, that she could not even stand up straight. And that, that's when something clicked here. She said she was walking around hunched over. So I asked her, you know, what, what pain is this is, uh, what side is the pain on? And uh, she said, right side. I said, you know, it sounds like appendicitis to me. So her friend uh, quickly Googled it, did some tests on her and said, yep, I think you're right. So uh, off to the hospital goes my daughter in the the midst of this. um, And sure enough, she has appendicitis. And uh, my mom was at my dad's side at the hospice when this happened. So uh, my daughter took a taxi to the hospital with her friend. And uh, my brother was still home. If I remember right, I think they only had one car at the time. And she called my brother saying she was scared. She didn't want to be alone, even though, you know, she had a friend with her. She wanted a family member. Uh, so he started walking to the hospital. And en route, he called me. She called me. I was trying to pack an overnight bag. I, I just remember there being a lot of chaos. Uh, my daughter was scheduled for surgery the next morning while I would be flying down. Um, thank God the surgery went well. Uh, my mom picked me up from the airport. And with news that my daughter would be discharged soon, we decided the first stop would be at the hospital where my daughter was. Um, And you know how slow it can be to discharge someone from a hospital. Uh, I was really anxious to see to see my dad at that point, uh, you know, after knowing that my daughter was okay. Um, So finally, a few hours later, we all left the hospital and on to the hospice we went. And my dad seemed in good spirits when we got there. He kept trying to talk to me, but I couldn't understand him because of the trach. I just kept trying to comfort him, kept hugging him. Um, I didn't know that would be the last time I saw him. Uh, When we all settled down to bed that night, it was quite late. I I think it was either right before midnight or right after midnight. The phone started ringing. Um, I didn't want to answer it because it wasn't my house, but I ran into my mom's bedroom and I I asked her, you know, aren't you going to get that? And we all seemed to know what it was. Um, my dad had passed peacefully, thank God. Uh, so, you know, so we all got dressed. We went back to the hospice, said our goodbyes. I was just so thankful to be able to see him one last time before he left this earth. I told him after he had passed on, now you can go explore the universe like you had always talked about. And my family and I did not cry much at this moment. I think we were just all kind of relieved he went peacefully. He wasn't suffering, and he was going to a better place. We'd all cry at different times. I think for my mom, it was when uh, my dad made the decision to get the trach and refused the feeding tube. I I think at that point, they both accepted, you know, that's the end, and they cried together. And uh, for me, it was was putting my dad's playlist together for his memorial. Um, My dad was a big music lover. That's where I get it from. Um, We... We listened to a lot of music together and some, you know, we didn't agree on. We don't always agree, Um, but we listened to a lot of the same things. Um, We listened to a variety of different things, Uh, but putting his playlist together, that's when I broke down. A lot of memories came up. And since my family lived in Florida, but most of our family was in New Jersey, it made more sense to have a a memorial in New Jersey at a later date. 
I'm going to continue this conversation in a few moments. We need to take a short break. You're listening to Holistic Healthy Living. I'm Carrie Leto. You're on TuneIn Radio and the BBM Global Network, and we'll be right back. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Patricia Fayeweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline, and she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes, and she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Welcome back to Holistic Healthy Living. I'm Carrie Leto. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And tonight we're talking about the grieving process. Um, I was telling you uh, before the break a little bit about my dad's passing. Um, So just to pick up where I left off, um, I extended my stay in Florida since my dad had passed and uh, my daughter was still healing from her... um, appendicitis, uh, appendectomy, right. She was still healing from that. Um, I, I was so happy to say I was able to help with the arrangements. Um, at the funeral home, the director looked at us at one point and said, we were taking this so well. And uh, honestly, I think we might've still been in shock. And like I said, it affects everyone differently. Um, you know, it's not that we're cold. It's just, you know, we all did our crying at, at different times. And uh, I told you 2015 was uh, was a hard year. I lost uh, quite a few close people to me. Um, one of them was my dog, uh, my Siberian Husky, uh, Comet. He was almost 12 years old, which I thought was just way too young for him. Um, we're so attached to our animals, right? Um, this was about two months after my dad had passed. Um, and my dog had Lyme disease. He had bad arthritis, you know, probably caused from the Lyme. Uh, he had bone on bone on some spots, and the vet had been helping him for some time, um, but this time he he just wasn't responding to treatments. Um, he was otherwise healthy, and that that's what was so hard. We had so much hope for him that he would turn around, but he didn't. And he was just he was so frustrated, laying there, trying to use his legs, trying to get up, and he would just cry. Um, Siberian Huskies, I don't know if you've ever had one or you, you know about the breed, but they're, they're very, very vocal. They talk. Um, so him just sitting there, you know, he would just sit there trying to get up. He would cry. It just killed me. Um, I didn't, I honestly didn't know what to do, but I knew that this was no life for him to just lay there and cry. And so sometimes you have to make that decision, you know, the best decision we can for our animals. Um, and so it's, so it's really hard to make that decision, but, um, you know, miss him every day. <laughs> and then uh, a few weeks after that, a very good friend of mine, uh, he was like an older, older, older brother to me, um, passed on. And I honestly thought that this man was invincible. He had been through so much. Um, he'd been in quite a few motorcycle accidents. Uh, one even took his leg. He called me from the hospital uh, when he told me the doctors were going to amputate his leg. And, um, but, you know, I sense fear, you know, he, he cried for a moment, but that was it. He knew it had to be done and he was so strong. 
Um, The next day he was scheduled for surgery and he was in good spirits. He was ready for it. All right. And I'm going to take us into our next story here. I lost another one of my close friends, but this was back in 2012. Uh, My friend Lacey, and she just died way too young. She was only 31 years old. And uh, she had a heart attack in my house. And this happened while she was all alone. I was at work when it happened. Um, I came home for lunch. I found her on the floor. I, I honestly thought she was still alive. I'm a really hopeful person, remember. Uh, called to 911. Police officer arrived to, within moments. He happened to be right down the street. He checked her out and he said, you know, I'm so sorry she's gone. Uh, he canceled out the resuscitation call and, and you know, told them she's gone. I was, I was in complete shock. Uh, my kids were just about to come home from school, so I was told to take them for a ride. And I called work to tell them what happened, and I got to say, you know, they did not seem moved at all. <laughs> um, that, that really bothered me. Um, I took the next day off from work, and their response, you know, same thing, you know, oh, but you're okay, right? And uh, like, are you kidding? I just want, lost one of my best friends here in my house. Um, I want to tell you about another close friend, too. I actually met Lacey through this other close friend. Um, someone we actually dated on and off for quite a few years. Um, didn't work out, but we remained friends. Um, he always had some issues with drinking, but I had no idea to what extent his addictions uh, would lead to. And eventually his addictions led him to take his own life. Um, this happened in 2010. And uh, I remember getting the call. It was actually my friend Lacey that I just spoke about that was the one to call me. And uh, she told me that he had shot himself and me forever hopeful, you know, he's okay, right? Uh, you know, hoping he didn't hit anything, you know, major. Um, no, he was gone. But my reaction, shock. All right. The, and this one really took a long time to hit me. I was in shock for a very long time. I remember going to the funeral with Lacey and another one of our friends, and they were both crying, and I, I was just numb. I was just still in shock. Um, I remember when they started to lower the casket into the ground, his sister stood up and just cried out, no, and and that's when it hit me. I remember coming home that day. Um, my best friend told me, you know, you need to go to your room and grieve. You, you have not cried yet. I told her, look, I need to grieve in my own way when I'm ready. It's different for everyone. And even though I cried that day, I was just in shock for so long. The reality of it really didn't hit me until much later, I think. And uh, I heard through the grapevine that a note had been left. uh, And it stated that he was addicted to heroin. And he couldn't stop. And he didn't want to stop. I don't know if anything else had been said in the note. Maybe I just don't remember. But I just remember wishing that he had said something to me about it. Like I said, we remained friends. We were still talking. He would tell me, you know, he was dating so-and-so, you know, things are going well. Um, he was living his dream. He was a tattoo artist. That's what he had always wanted to do. Um, I mean, at the time, I was, you know, slaving away in an office where I didn't want to be. And, uh, you know, sometimes you think everybody, you know, they, they're, they're living their dream, but you really don't know what's going on inside. And uh, sometimes they're very good at masking it and not telling you what's really going on. I, you know, I just wish that he had tried to find help. I remember being so mad at the drugs for doing this to him. All right. And this, this is going to lead us into our next topic, which is uh, mental health. So do you think that substance users have issues with mental health? Because uh, I remember hearing quite a few stories, and they're all pretty much the same. You know, the drugs make me forget about my problems or my anxi- anxiety or my fear. Uh, so there's always a root cause to everything, right? What if there was a way to get to this root cause? And now I'm no expert on mental health, but I do know that, uh, you know, certain foods can help autism. Uh, I think I heard that vitamin B can help uh, schizophrenia. Uh, so maybe food can help heal some of the other conditions out there, you know, like schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Um, and that doesn't mean that meds aren't needed in these situations. Uh, like I said, I'm not an expert on mental health, um, but there, there are some studies. You can go check them out. Um, you know, like I said, the vitamins and food can help with some of these conditions. Um, talk into somebody. It's just, you know, if you know somebody with a mental health issue, be a friend, talk to them, you know, try, try to walk them through it. Um, ask as many questions as you can. 
Um, so we've lost a lot, a lot of celebrities uh, lately, right? Due to suicide. Um, you see a lot of celebrities with mental health issues today. Um, I know some of the recent suicides, uh, Robin Williams, everybody knows who Robin Williams is, right? Um, Chris Cornell, uh, Chester Bennington, all right, I'm probably showing my rocker side with that. Um, Chris Cornell was a musician, he had a phenomenal voice, a uh, singer for Soundgarden, Audio Slave. Uh, of course, he did solo work, awesome voice. Uh, Chester Bennington was from the band Linkin Park and just much too young. Uh, do you think if they had talked to someone, they'd still be here? All right, we're going to take another short break. You're listening to Holistic Healthy Living. I'm Carrie Leto. We'll be right back. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Welcome back to Holistic Healthy Living. I'm Carrie Leto. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Tonight we're talking about the grieving process. Um, we're also talking about uh, mental health. I told you uh, some of my stories, my personal stories of losing some very close people to me. Uh, I just spoke of some celebrities with mental health issues that had committed suicide, uh, gone much too young. Um, so I think, uh, you know, we left off with me asking you, do you think if they had talked to someone, they would still be here? Yeah, I, I wish my friend Brian, who took his own life, would have reached out to someone right before, you know. And uh, he he did actually bring up suicide from time to time. I, I do remember him talking about it. He always had this a little bit of dark side to him. I remember him saying he wasn't sure if he wanted to have kids because what if he did something stupid? Um, I remember a few times thinking he maybe, you know, maybe he had bipolar disorder and I, I wish he would have gotten, um, checked out. I, I really wish he would have asked for some help. And I think we need to erase that stigma of being crazy. You know, if, if you reach out asking for help with a mental health issue, people are so afraid of, of being looked at as, as being crazy. Um, everyone has mental health issues from time to time. It does not make you crazy. And everyone, ev I mean, everyone, come on, you've all broken down in one way or another. Um, I, I'll tell you about one of my experiences a few weeks ago. All right. A good deal of everything I've talked about tonight has led to this point. Um, and basically I, I was feeling alone, you know, do you ever feel alone? I, I mean, you know, I live with my boyfriend, my, my son is 17. He still lives at home. I don't mean that kind of alone. I mean, you know, you just suddenly feel all alone, like you have no one to talk to. You know, a few weeks ago, my boyfriend said something. It just upset me, hit me the wrong way. We, we rarely fight, but um, it, he said something that upset me. I went out on the back deck to uh, one of my happy places. Um, 
my uh, hammock swing. I love it. When the dogs came outside with me, we just hung around outside. Um, I called a friend because I just really want to talk to someone and I got voicemail and it was a Saturday night. Uh, I had a few other friends I could have called, but I didn't want to bother them. You know, Saturday night, I figured they're probably out and about living their lives. Uh, so I grabbed a glass of wine and I decided to head up to the jacuzzi tub. I figured that would make me feel better, right? Um, but I just really started missing my close friends that had moved on. And I, I just started crying, missing them, feeling alone at the moment. I wish I would have been able to talk to one of them at the moment. And then I remember hearing uh, Brian's voice in my head. Uh, this is how I felt when I did it. And uh, that just made me cry more. And um, I must have been in the tub for quite some time because my boyfriend started knocking on the bathroom door, asking if everything was all right. Um, and I, I told him to come in. I was still crying. And I told him how I was feeling and what I had just heard in my head. And he said, no, no. And, and I, you know, I said, no, I would never do that. I'm just repeating what I heard in my head. And it upsets me. Um, I, I'm just really missing my friends, you know. And, and then all of a sudden I started to feel a little bit selfish. Um, because I remember someone once telling me, you know, those things that just stick in your head. And this is one of them. Um, I remember someone once telling me that if you're crying, you're feeling sorry for yourself which was true. I was feeling sorry for myself. And then I remembered something else that you don't want to grieve for someone too much because what if you're holding their spirit back from moving on because they do not want to leave because, you know, they, they want you to feel some sort of comfort before they move on. It's a little different perspective, right? I mean, when you think of it that way, so always remember, remember those that have passed on, never forget them, but grieve and heal the pain. I, I really do believe they are in a better place. Um, I, I can't, I can't, I, I told you earlier, I can't uh, grasp the concept of there not being anything after this. I really do believe we all go to a better place. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you a story about my dog really quick too. Um, my dog Comet, after he had passed on, my son accidentally uh, took a picture with his phone of the floor. And there, there was our comet laying on the floor, a, a big shadow of him. So he was, he was still with us. He was still hanging around. Um, tell you a little bit about uh, the kleshas in in yoga. There's five kleshas we learn about, and they're the cause of all pain and suffering for human existence. One of them is attachment. So very true, right? It's like a relationship that ends. You know, so you love relationships. Sometimes you're still attached to that person for quite some time, right? But time heals. Okay, so remember what I believe. We're all divine beings living out our unique individual lives in our own ways. There is no right or wrong. There is what is right or wrong for you. I, I think of Earth as sort of a school. Um, perhaps you came here to learn and to grow. Always remember that big picture. It may help you. Um, I'm always bringing up that big picture and always you know, reminding myself of these things. Uh, there's also a story in uh, a story you have to read uh, to become a yoga teacher. Every yoga teacher knows the story. It's the Bhagavad Gita. And uh, I'm not going to get into the whole story, but, um, you know, just a bit. Uh, main character has to kill um, there. He's a warrior and he has to kill um, some members of his own family are on the other side. And he's trying to make sense of it. And, you know, I can't do it. And he's walking along with God. And um, at one point. He he wants to see God. He said, you know, show me yourself. And, and he, no, I can't show you. Oh, please, you know, show me, show me yourself. And God reveals himself to him. And he's got a thousand faces, the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, everything. So um, just kind of help us, helps us to make sense of, you know, we all come from the divine. We're all a part of it. Right. Good, bad, ugly. Remember that big picture. Okay, so um, getting back a little bit to the mental health, um, is is anybody on Twitter? Uh, <laughs> I opened an account years ago, but I was never on. Um, but I'm a rocker, so all the rock stars seem to be on Twitter, so I'm back on Twitter. And um, I, I, love, I just love what Lizzie Hale just did recently on Twitter. Uh, Lizzie Hale is from the band Hailstorm, if you don't know who she is. Uh, she's just started a movement on Twitter with the hashtag Raise Your Horns. 
All right. So we're going to talk about this Raise Your Horns a little bit when we come back because we're going to take another short break. You're listening to Holistic Healthy Living on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm Carrie Leto, and we'll be right back. There are artists, and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Col des Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com www.alice asmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Welcome back to Holistic Healthy Living. I'm Carrie Leto. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And tonight we're talking uh, about grieving, honoring this day, um, we're talking a little bit about mental health. Uh, I left off telling you uh, about a movement that was just started by Lizzie Hale uh, last month on Twitter. Um, Lizzie Hale's from the band Hailstorm. So she started uh, a movement with the hashtag Raise Your Horns, and it was to raise mental health awareness. Uh, she was inspired to do this because of another rocker suicide, uh, Jill Janis of the band Huntress. Beautiful woman, beautiful voice. She had that opera singer voice. She also suffered from mental health issues. So Lizzie started the Raise Your Horns movement to erase the stigma that comes with mental health issues, that you're crazy, right? Um, don't ever feel that you're crazy. If you need help, go talk to somebody, please. Um, so David Draymond, uh, he's from Disturbed, singer for Disturbed, uh, sent her a picture, sent Lizzie a picture of his Raise Your Horns and said, you know what, I'm not on social media anymore, but please go ahead and post the picture as he loved what she was doing. So I retweeted this. So if you want to connect with me on Twitter, I'm Carrie Curletto. Uh, you can also just look up Lizzie, look up, um, you know, the hashtag raise your horns. You'll, you'll see a bunch of stuff come up. Uh, social media can be a good thing sometimes, right? I, I just recently connected with another friend on Facebook. I have not talked to her in a very, very long time, but it was so nice to reconnect. Uh, I found out she works close to where I live, so we're talking about meeting up for dinner one day. Uh, I think you know next week I'll have some time to make that happen. Uh, so I'll be reaching out to her, and, and I'm sure we're going to have a great time. Um, so between this and missing my friends that have passed on and uh, – my feeling alone that one day, it, it inspired me to reach out to a few of my friends I had not talked to in a while and just to let them know that they're loved, that they're special. Um, you know, hey, maybe we don't talk every day, but just letting you I'm just letting you know that you're loved. Um, so you all have some homework here. I, I want you to reach out to someone you, you might not have talked to in a while and just let them know you're thinking about them. Let them know they're loved. And uh, I want to leave you with this story. Uh, before there was social media, we used to send inspiring stories through email. Remember that? Well, one of these stories really stuck with me, and it, it's what I want to close the show out with tonight. Uh, so I recently told this story to someone, and they told me I just got the chills. Okay, so here goes. Uh, there's a kid in high school cleaned out his locker, everything, all, all of his books, everything. And he was one of the smartest kids in school. And walking down the hall, another kid knocked into him, called him a name. All, all of his books, everything this kid was carrying was knocked to the floor. 
And another kid came over and helped him. And this, this kid played a lot of sports. Um, and, uh, he helped him pick up his books. He said, you know, why are you carrying around all these books? And then he looked at him and he said, Hey, don't you live near me? He goes, uh, why don't we walk home together? And, and they, you know, talked as they walked home together. And the next day he saw his new friend at school and he went up to him and told him the reason why he was carrying all those books was he was planning on going home and committing suicide that day. Um, he cleaned out his locker so his parents didn't have to deal with the pain of doing it. And then he then told his new friend that his kind, his kind words were what had stopped him from going through with it. So that's where I want to leave you tonight. All right. Be kind. You never know if your kindness can save someone else's life. Be kind to all living things, not just people, animals as well. Respect all life. Be the light in someone else's world. Most importantly, don't forget to be kind to yourself. If you're grieving, you can't get over it. There are grieving counselors that can help you. If you're struggling with mental health or have any thoughts of suicide, please, please go talk to somebody. Please go get help. And also where I live, they have this thing called the CLEAR program. If you're struggling with addiction or substance abuse, you can walk into any police station, tell them you need help. They will get you the help you need. All right. I'm hoping all my friends stay safe in the Carolinas. we got a major hurricane coming towards us, Hurricane Flores. I just checked in with my friend in South Carolina. She's okay in the mountains. I hope you all stay safe. Remembering all of our heroes that died this day and because of this day, Thank you for listening tonight. I I really hope you enjoyed tonight's show. You don't want to miss next week. Our guest is Frank Geronimo. We're going to be talking about water and a device called Kangen that can change the way you think about water. All right, so remember those magical hours of sleep. Start winding down. The light in me bows to the light in all of you. Namaste. This has been Holistic Healthy Living with your host, Carrie Leto. Carrie believes prevention is key to keeping dis-ease away. Tune in each week as Carrie offers integrative, alternative, and complementary choices to Western medicine. Here on Carrie Leto's Holistic Healthy Living. Listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.